I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, Catherine Lynch Meyering. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Hello, hello. It really is a pleasure to have you on the show this week because you have you have an extensive Disney background with a lot of voices, and one of my favorites, which I think we should talk about first, is with the actual haunted bride, Melanie, from Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris, which I've yet to see in person, yeah. but I still adore it. <laughs> it's quite a spectacular ride, I must say. Um, I've been to three of the Disney haunted mansions, one in, um, one in Florida, one in California, and then the one in Paris. And I may be biased, but I do think the one in Paris is so different and so exciting. And it is my favorite. For listeners who have not seen it before, go ahead and check out a video of it, but I'll give you a quick little synopsis. It's more about this uh, bride who has been looking for her long lost love and been waiting in this ha- in this house, this mansion for a long time. And, and suddenly there's sp- spooky ghosts and this one ghost in particular, he's, he, he's called the Phantom. And so from there on, uh, the bride sings this lovely ballad and that is you, that is you, Catherine, singing and my God, it's beautiful. That is me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was quite exciting. Uh, when did you find out about auditions for this specific project? Because usually that's not really advertised in, in the public. No, well, I was working at Disney at the time. I was working for WDI, which is the group that designs Disneyland. And I was the Adventureland team secretary. So we were working on, well, actually, that was even before. I was working on the Adventureland team for Disneyland Paris. And I got to know the designers of the rides. So I got to know Christian Hope, who had been drawing little scenes from it at his desk. And then uh, Jeff Burke was a friend. So fast forward a few years later, I was working for the lighting department under Andrea Randall, who was our manager. And another lady and I had both talked to one another, known that we'd had theatrical backgrounds. I had been an actress for many years and my job at Disney was the first real job I ever had. So we were, I don't know, sitting around the cafeteria one day and she said, oh, they're doing some auditions. There's a a casting lady who named Gabrielle Reynolds and she said, we're doing these auditions. Would you be interested? Well, sure. Why not? I had just actually come back from maternity leave. My son was like four months old and they, I'd done some recording for Disney before little voiceovers. So um, they said, Hey, come on in. So I walk in the room and there's my old friends from the Euro Disney project, Jeff Burke and, He said, "Uh, this is the project we're doing, and here's the music, learn it. I came in and auditioned, just like many an audition would be for my whole life. I've done a lot of auditions. And they chose my voice over all of them. It's a very difficult and- piece to sing, though. It, I, you know, it's a very operatic and very plenty of high notes. <laughs> plenty high. Well, and there were a number of n- number of different scenes throughout. You know, and there's there's the same theme, the haunted mansion. You know, ooh, that theme, which had been written by I think Exitensio, the words I think at least, and uh, Buddy Baker I think had done the music long ago. Well, John Debney, who was the composer who had done variations on it, um, liked my voice out of everybody else's and actually taught me the music himself, which was kind of exciting. And how how many takes did, did the overall project have? Well, it was a long day's process. What happened was, um, at the time I was working as a secretary for the lighting department, but because they chose me, they said, well, you know, you get the day off. So that was awfully exciting. I got the day off to go sing. And we went to a, a studio in in Hollywood. And what had happened is we'd gotten to this studio. They had taped the background tracks with the London Philharmonic in London. And then at a recording studio in downtown Hollywood, they brought the tapes in. And we recorded, I would say, from about 9 or 10 in the morning till about noon. And then we had a lunch break and came back and said that there had been a technical glitch with all the recording and there was some hum. So we literally had to record everything again. So I would say how many takes, you know, countless ones, but we recorded like a full day. So let's say from nine or 10 till about five with the break. And so it was really like a long, long day of singing. Wow. And it was really fun. It was really <laughs> fun because the composer was there giving me notes and refining this and sing that better. And Jeff Burke, who was our, the show producer, 
had brought all the art from different designers. So whenever they, he would describe what the scene was going to be, and he would place on my music stand right next to where the real music was a picture of what I was singing about. So there'd be a picture of the bride and different, various different attitudes and from different artists. And it was very helpful, you know, got me in the mood. And did you finally see the project in person? I did. And this is a fun story. As I said, I was working as a secretary for the lighting department and we were at a secretary's day lunch and I won a ticket to like two round trip tickets to Paris, just at a random raffle ticket. So I took my husband and we got babysitters. Our kids were little at the time and we went to Paris and we stayed in Paris, the city proper. And then we took the train out to Euro Disney, which was so fun and stayed there in their kind of Western themed hotel and went to see the ride. And we were standing in the foyer. We were standing there listening and it was so fun when you come up in the queue, you can kind of hear my voice in the graveyard and you come up in and we were standing right in the beginning part where she's just singing a little and um we wouldn't get on the ride and the lady kept saying why you know a little little uh, french girl who kind of had a little french accent why do you not go on the ride you know and we said well we're listening and i wasn't going to talk about it but my husband said well that's her voice and so she throws her arms in the air and says oh my god i sing with you every day kisses me on both cheeks, gets all of the other little ride operators to say hello. They put me on the ride, and it was really wonderful. And then we came back out, and she said, you can go again. So I got to ride it twice. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But it's great Bye. because we can, hear your, we can hear your screams on the Tower of Terror, and we used to be able to hear some of your, uh, your cluck, one of the singing chickens at Disney, Mickey's Toontown. When my kids were little, we would go to Toontown. And we'd go under the little Clara Cluck, Cluck. It's like right above the mailbox where she's giving singing lessons. My daughter would like put her hand up and say, um, that's my mom. You know, that's my mom. And they'd look at her like, yeah, right, kid. But it really was. It was really me. Now, have you done anything recent for Disney? Not as of late, not for Disney. No, I retired from Disney, I want to say, ooh, 96 or was it 91? I don't know. It's a long time, maybe even 2001, I worked at the Disney Channel as well. So nothing for Disney. I just finished doing a play out here in, in, in Valencia, where I live at the college. We just did a great production of In the Heights. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I still keep my hand. And I do writing. I write lyrics as well. And I have two albums that my lyrics are on. One is called Kiss Me While You Have the Chance which was written with my composing partner, a guy named Steve Marzullo, and another called Show Some Beauty with the same composer, Steve Marzullo. We've been writing songs. I met him when I was in New York City, actually in Massachusetts. I worked with on a play with Julie Tamor, who has since gone on to be kind of famous. And we had done a play called Liberty's Taken. We stayed friends all these years, and it's been 30 years now that this fellow, Steve Marzullo, and I have been writing songs. And... There are two albums, and then also this one song, which is called My Soul Rejoices, was recorded by Andrea McCardle, who was the original Annie. Have you both ever talked about actually writing a musical? We have over the years, but the thing is, uh, he lives in New York and I live in California. Mm, Our relationship yeah. is a little bit like Elton John and Bernie Taupin. I'll send him a <laughs> lyric, and if he likes it, he, he writes it, and if he doesn't, he doesn't. And I want to make sure I mention to our listeners that they can head to your website, which is KatherineLynch.com. There's actually a lot of sound clips from your appearance in the Disney parks for those who cannot find yeah. them on YouTube. Well, thanks, Tammy. And to end our interview, I always ask my guests three questions. I call them the Fab Three. So we'll start with the <laughs> Donald one, which is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theater? Mary Poppins. And our goofy question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Flit. And our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Grim, Grin, and Ghosts. <laughs> would you like to sing us out with it? <laughs> <laughs> Grim, Grin, and Ghosts go out to socialize. <laughs> and you want a little Phantom Bride? You want a little... Ooh. 